I was pregnant at 16, um, unplanned, uh, and at 17 I had my daughter. Uh, her name is Whitley, and she's five now. And um, I started at Carson Newman when she was eight months old. Uh, I graduated high school in 2012, and then started here in 2012. A lot of members in the community were not very supportive. You know, you've ruined your chances. Um, statistically speaking, I had, um, but I didn't accept that. I came here um, and looked around and went to freshman orientation. And um, at that orientation, uh, Dr. O'Brien prayed in the Holt Field House. And I started crying. <laughs> Um, because I was just like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And, and I wasn't really sure at first, but then uh, just that he, he prayed over the students that were coming in. And I was sitting there with my little baby uh, during that time, and, and I just knew like, this is, this is the place where God wants me to be. This is God's provision for me. And, and I didn't know how I would navigate everything uh, as far as childcare, which is, a huge deal for a young mom that's a single mom trying to go to school. Um, and I, I reached out to different people in the community and I found uh, the churches on campus um, have really great children's day out programs. Several of the professors said, oh, well, I sent my children there when they were younger. And so I enrolled my daughter there and she was right on campus. After class, I would go pick her up and it was very uh, good for me. Uh, Dr. Smith uh, in religion, um, his daughters were in preschool with my daughter and so were uh, Dr. Hartsocks. And um, I had something come up with my labs in science because you have to go to class in the morning and then lab in the afternoon. And um, his wife Pam, just out of the kindness of her own heart, decided to take care of my daughter after her preschool was over. And so every day, uh, Whitley would go and play with Charlotte and Elizabeth, and um, I knew that she was safe and taken care of and in a good environment while I was able to do my studies. One year, I had to take a summer chemistry class, and there were five students in the class, and um, my daughter would sit in the back and play Play-Doh <laughs> and color, and she came every day for, I think it was six weeks. Um, I definitely see the love of Christ in my professors. I've had people pray with me when I was going through a hard time. I, I definitely think that it's, it's because it's just different here. It sounds cliche, I just feel loved. <laughs> uh, I feel like I am part of the family here and that my daughter is as well. In the next year I'll be applying to PA schools and accelerated nursing to nurse practitioner schools. Um, and, I, and I had a woman say to me, well, God's gonna love you either way. God's gonna provide for you either way. And I, I didn't need to hear anything besides God's gonna provide for you and that there's grace for you. And that's when I decided, okay, well, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be good at it. <laughs> and I'm gonna go through with it. And so that was um, sort of when I decided that I would trust God with everything. And, and um, I talked to Christine Jones here, um, and she said, Hunter, this is your God-sized goal. And getting your education is the thing in your life that you will look back on and say, I didn't do that myself. There's no way that I could have done that myself. That's all 100% orchestrated by God, and that's His hand in everything. And. Um, this is, she told me that about two years ago, and here I am about to graduate saying, <laughs> this is my God-sized goal. I couldn't have done this myself. <laughs>